Nerds, Steven here from the Awesome Nerds, and today we're going to be talking about wireless debugging, a useful tool that allows you to see the states of variables and run through your code step by step using breakpoints. A few materials you'll need to do this include a download cable to connect your phones to the computer, your two phones that have the driver station and robot controller installed on them, and a copy of Android Studio on your computer. The first thing you want to do is move your mouse cursor to the bottom left hand corner of your screen and then click on the Windows button. Then type in CMD and click on Command Prompt. The next thing you want to do is navigate to the Android Studio install folder. To do this, use the CD command and then the next folder in the file structure. This is the default install location but it may vary if you have a custom install. Once you navigate to your Android Studio install folder, you will then want to navigate to the SDK folder and then the Platform Tools folder. The first command you want to run is adb kill server. Then you want to run adb tcpip 5555. You may get a prompt on your device asking you to allow debugging mode. Make sure you accept it. The final command you want to run is adb connect, then your phone's IP. Your phone's IP can be found in the settings app under about device and then under status. Once you're done running these commands, you can close the command prompt window and unplug your phone. Now run your code as normal, and if you've done everything correctly, you should still see your phone pop up in the menu, even though it's unplugged. Now you may notice that your code takes a lot longer to download than normal. This is because it is doing it wirelessly instead of wired, so if you need to download your code fast, make sure to do it wired. Now that your phone is connected wirelessly, I am going to show you how to use breakpoints. A breakpoint is where your code will stop while running in debug mode. To move on from that breakpoint, you'll have to press the next button in Android Studio. I'll show you how to do that later. To create a breakpoint, move your mouse cursor to the column to the left of your code. Then, left click. You should see a red circle appear. This red circle symbolizes a breakpoint. To remove a breakpoint, just click it again. Next, you want to move your mouse to the play button, but instead of clicking the play button, you want to move your mouse to the right and click the little bug button with the play button inside of it. Next, you want to make sure your phone is selected in the deployment target menu and then press OK. Notice that your code downloads faster this time. This is because you haven't made any changes since your last download. Now that your code is finished downloading, you will want to run it as normal from your driver station phone. Once your code is running, go back to Android Studio and you should see a debug menu pop up. In this debugging menu under the variables section, you can see many variables that you've declared above. For example, we declared the x variable and it's visible down here. To move on from this breakpoint, click the little green arrow on the left hand side of your screen. As you can see, the x variable updated to 5 because it moved on from the previous breakpoint. If you ever want to stop your program while in debug mode, just make sure to click the little red square in the top right corner of Android Studio. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it helped you learn about wireless debugging and how to use it. If you liked the video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below.